up guys my name is Mark Cinemarail welcome back to the channel welcome back to RC vlog guys we're back with another Tamiya Tuesday or some of you guys like to call it Tamiya Tuesday or maybe that's the only way maybe I'm the only one that calls it Tamiya Tamiya anyways we are back with another Tamiya Tuesday this is where I basically have a whole bunch of Tamiyas I got my collection going on back there uh, behind the mics and stuff like that but I want to build them and I'm having a good time so we started building one on the very first Tamiya Tuesday which was that guy look at how far i got guys you will not believe how far i got but before we go through that car and how that how that build is going so far i do have something else which is down there i got more to me is more to me is so we're gonna unbox those to me is we're gonna go over this build so far and man is it so much fun so what do you guys want to do you want to go over this car the build so far or do you want to see what's in that box right there um, i'm guessing you guys want to see what's in that box let's go ahead and open it up <clears throat> all right here we go Woo! i'm pretty excited about these so let me give you a quick story on how these came about so basically doug he's one of my subscribers he's actually a good friend of mine he's been racing in my area for a very long time he is a huge to me a fan huge to me he's actually building a grand hauler we're gonna go check out his collection soon but he sent me a message and said hey mark check this out they're back in stock you should probably pick one of these up these are going to be limited, probably going to be worth a lot of money one day. So I was like, okay, logged in and I picked them up. Um, this is something that I've kind of always wanted. I've got a really good idea of what I want to do with these cars. Um, but yes, I said cars. There's more than one. So let's open these up. Oh yeah, here they are. Oh, they look so good. Look, it came, I didn't, I didn't order it from Tamiya, but it came in the Tamiya box. It's pretty funny. That means they got it and they were like, you know what? This guy ordered two of them. So let's just send it to him that way. Okay, here they are. Here, oh, come on, come on! Here it is. Bam! The Sand Scorcher, look at how cool that thing is. So this is one of the cars that has more of the metal components. So the, kind of the entry level to me of cars I've built, like the Grasshopper, the, fro uh, actually the Frog has metal. <coughs> the Grasshopper 2, the Hornet, those all have like plastic components. This one has more metal stuff. But look at how cool this looks. So what I want to do with this is I want to turn it into, I've seen this done before. It looked really cool. Like um, Herbie, you know Herbie, like her, the, the 53, number 53 uh, bug. I want to paint it like Herbie, but build it out. Oh man, look how good it looks. The Sand Scorcher. I'll put a link in the description below. You, you already know. I don't even have to tell you. You already know. I got two. I had to get two. You have to get two, especially these. Like if you're going to build one, I feel like you have to have one in the box. So we're going to put this in the collection. This will get put into the, I guess, the circulation of cars I want to build. Um, but man, this car is so cool. It has so much metal on it. It's got these cool, like a good, cool plastic shield. I've seen this car in real life. It looks really good. I'm super stoked. Oh man. The... The racing buggy, yes, I had to look at the book. The racing buggy, Sand Scorcher. We got them, guys. We got them. All right, so now for this guy. Man, look, I, I got so far with this. So this is only about, I would say about three and a half hours of build, and I'm almost completely done. Look, I mean, I got all the suspension pieces on there already. The rear is already built out. The build was super easy. However, it's extremely different than the, like a Traxxas build or a Techno build. So on a Traxxas or a Techno build, basically you do bags, all the screws for that bag are in there. So essentially you open bag A and you can go all the way through bag A, complete bag A, then bag B. And then at the end, you kind of put it all together. In this case, basically all the screws are in different bags. All the parts trees that are down there are in different parts trees. And it tells you, Here's the manual over here, but basically it tells you which bag to grab out of what. So essentially the way you build Tamiya kits is you have to unbox everything and unbag everything, put it all out and then kind of pick and grab what you need. It's not separated based on like stages. So you can't sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna do bag A through B tonight. Uh, you can't do that. You can say you're gonna do certain parts tonight, but when you're done, you're gonna have a whole bunch of extra screws and a whole bunch of extra parts laying everywhere because they're not all in a separate bags. Nonetheless, it's still a lot of fun. Um, there's a little bit of guessing, not really guessing, but you kind of have to like search for things at times. Um, after you start building the first few components, you can you kind of already know where things are gonna be. Like, oh, that's gonna be one of the black pieces. That's gonna be a plastic piece. You kind of know where it's gonna be. But it was it was super fun. It was super easy. Uh, I did put bearings on the car, so it comes with these bushings. 
this bushing right here. And the other day, not the other day, but one time at a swap meet, I ran into a gentleman and he hooked me up. He gave me this bag full of like extra. He knew that he saw that I was starting to pick up some tomatoes. He gave me this bag of extra stuff and he had a whole bunch of bearings. He said there was enough bearings for a full kit in there and there was. So there are bearings in there, which is really, really cool. Also, I got these servos. These servos that I use, they're just standard servos. I got them on eBay. I actually looked up, I think I looked up Futaba 3003, I believe. But anyways, I'll put a link in the description below if I can find a link to those servos, but they're just some cheap servos. They're not high performing servos. It's pretty much just something to stay and like keep that servo place so I can finish the build, but I don't actually see it needing to like perform really, really well. Um, crazy tools that I use. I did, I have the, I bought this. These are all I bought from actually Home Depot. Uh, but these are just small needle nose pliers um, and then i got the the flush cutters can you see that is that zooming i'm not that zooming very well let, let, let's see yeah it doesn't matter anyways they're flush cutters so that way whenever you cut the parts off the tree there's not a whole bunch of excess plastic on there and then i actually have the to me <laughs> the to me it's screwdriver i read somewhere where someone said that the to me a screwdriver really really helps like it, it works really really well like it's a better screwdriver to make sure you have a good screwdriver when you use this stuff or screw stuff in that way you don't strip it out uh, i also have the protex screwdriver for the smaller pieces there is a smaller tamiya screwdriver i'll see if i can find it and put in put in the link of, in the description below also for these screwdrivers but this was really really cool um other than that building the body wasn't as bad as i thought it would be these stickers all they were all already die cut so you didn't have to worry about like cutting the stickers out that was one of my things and then i knew i knew building like again that one was my example i knew that building to me a kits i always stop at the at the body because the body takes so long on a lot of the kits you're halfway done whenever you get to the body so i started with the body this time that way i knew when i got the car done it was gonna be a lot of fun i put the stickers on it didn't take me that long i want to say 30 45 minutes to put the stickers on there i did like kind of what's cool about these is like if you want to get them perfectly straight if you stick them on there as so long as you don't push them on really hard, they do come back off so you don't just destroy the sticker. But as you can see, the stickers went on very clean. Looks really good. Everything lined up. Yep, everything lined up really good. That, not as great. It could have been better. This side's better. Look at that. Oh, yeah. So, not bad. Already built the body. I still have to put the uh, little headlight things right here. I still got to put those on and then put the stickers on that. Um, the only thing that I'm lacking that could take this build to take a little bit longer is I don't want to skimp out on <clears throat> on this. I don't want to skimp out on how the, the driver looks. So I think I'm going to go to Hobby Lobby and pick up some like hobby paint, like a hobby model paint or whatever, and see if I can paint this really, really cool. Because I want to be able to paint my guys and I want them to look really, really cool. So overall, I'm going to be done with this thing. By next to me on Tuesday, I'm going to be done. I actually probably will plug in a receiver so we can get this thing to actually run so we can see what it's all about. I'm sure it's not going to be anything crazy. I actually drove one at the parade because Doug brought one of his to his parade, but I'll drive it inside the house. I think it would be fun. So next Tuesday, next to me a Tuesday, I should have this running and we'll start another kit. Oh man, these are so freaking awesome. One more quick tip. I did. I remember Doug telling me that these were going to be a pain in the butt to build. Um, they weren't the easiest. They could have been, they could have been easier, but the trick I found it, the hard part is getting, so basically it's a three piece wheel, right? There's the center piece. And then there's these outside pieces that you push together like a bead lock. Basically getting that center piece is hard because these, this rubber doesn't really flex. So the, what I've seen, what I've, I've found to be easiest is put the wheel in like this. So this is the center piece of the wheel, right? Um, put it in like that sideways, and then you can just kind of rotate it in place. Uh, I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand. I know I can do it with two hands. There you go. See, you rotate it in place and then it's nice and nicely fit in there. And then there is the outsides. And then basically you put them together. But that tip did help. I remember Doug telling me to do that. Basically slide it in sideways first, uh, perpendicular to the tire. Don't try to pop them in. And uh, yeah, you can get those wheels on way freaking easier. Well, I hope you liked this video, guys. Everything I showed you in this video will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell, and you guys will see me next time. Later, guys.